It's that kind of day. We <laughs> want to welcome Rebecca Bray. She is the author of The Witch's Diary and has a short story in Swashbuckling Cats, which my hand does not want to show in this lovely screen. <laughs> um, so hi, Rebecca. Hi. Um, so is that your workplace behind you? It is, yeah. This is my basement office where I do most of my stuff. Because in the Q&A, we asked about your workplace, I know, and you've got this little bug behind you. Yes. That's, that's my, one of my Hermans from the witch's diary. Yes. <laughs> one of your Hermans. He keeps me company. That's um, bigger than normal, but smaller than when he ended? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Without giving too much away. <laughs> and who's your fuzzy pal behind you? Oh, that's the little, that's a little worm from um, Labyrinth. Oh, okay. The, the cup of tea. Would you yes. like to come in for a cup of tea with Mrs.? Yep. That's my little wormy guy. I have, I have, yeah, I have stuff all over the place in here. It's just stuff that makes me happy. Yeah, I'm, my house is sort of a, a geek gasm. I mean, it's just full of geeky weird things. Yeah. So I know we have, um, I have a, a collection. I don't know if you're into video games, but if you know the Assassin's Creed video games. I've heard of them, yeah. Well, there's, I don't know, about a, 10 or 12 of them, and I have statues for every one. So when the new one came out this year, I had to expand it because it didn't fit on one shelf. Oh, so, <laughs> nice. Yeah. So, yeah. My house is yeah. Nothing but video game references, and we have a Gandalf and a Gollum over there up top. Oh, and... oh. <laughs> yeah. They're the best. Yeah. I do, I do play um, video games, but they tend to be like the older like PC games, like Might and Magic Heroes and stuff like that. Those, yeah, because I'm strictly PC. I don't play on the console at all. So. Yeah, yeah. I just, I could never get into the MMO. No. Games it, it involves playing with other people, and I just don't exactly. do that well. <laughs> I totally agree. Yes, video games are not yeah. other people friendly as far as I'm concerned. Right? Yeah. Old school. Yes. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know if that's our age or maybe. <laughs> I'm I'm kind of a hermit too, so I <laughs> I like doing things on my own. So then you're not as um bothered by the pandemic then as others? No. <laughs> yeah, no. I I you know, I'm I'm quite quite an introvert and I'm a hermit by nature, so not a lot has changed for me to be honest but I have I have family and friends who are really extroverted and man it's it's really hard for them to not go out and see people or to go on like vacations like my um my mom um she loves to travel and this year has it's really been so so tough on her yeah, yeah I, I have friends who are like that too. Me, I'm the same way. I'm quite happy. I've got my computer games. I'm, I've got books. You can just leave me alone. Yeah, but, um, yeah. But uh, I have friends who are just, they can't, if they don't have people, they just are just, you know, on edge. Yeah. Luckily, they have spouses, so they're not totally alone, but it's still yeah. Not yeah. quite the same. Yeah. But, I Who knew that being an introvert would actually come in exactly. handy? <laughs> Although I did hear an interesting thing on one of the podcasts I was listening to. The guy was talking about the pandemic and he said, yeah, people who are, are with a partner wish they had some time alone. And people who are alone wish they had a partner with them so they weren't alone, which basically just tells you being in a pandemic sucks no matter what. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I am so, I feel so blessed, like, honestly, because my, my partner, we write together, we live together, we've been best friends since high school. Um, so being holed up with your, with your best friend, um, it's not so bad. Yeah. And uh, my daughter, my daughter, who's almost four, 
um, just keeps life interesting in so many ways that you could, can't anticipate. So they do at yeah. that age. Mine are grown up and out of the house, so I don't. You know, you text her every week or two. How are you doing? Aww. Yeah. Yeah. No, we're very lucky. Even though the days are the same, they're never really the same with a four-year-old no. around. Yeah, <laughs> definitely not. They are. Yeah. Um, so we should, I guess, talk about the book and the story. Uh, where do you want to start? Do you want to start? Because the story is Swashbuckling Cats came out first. Yeah. Um, and you have the story, I have it here, The Motley Crew. Yes. Which I will fully admit, I read Witch's Diary. I did not read Motley Crew. Oh, that's so okay. I, you know, I'm honest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can't read everything all the time. And to be honest, I'm not a short story person. You know, yeah. even though I put the book together, like you'll find my name in the, the <laughs> copyright page on both of them, actually. But... Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm not, I don't, yeah. And that's, yeah. you know, personal preference. Everyone has their preferences. So yeah. tell me a bit about the short story as if uh, it's someone who hasn't read it without giving spoilers. <laughs> um, well, it, it's more of like an old school kind of pirate adventure story. And uh, the captain uh, has picked up a cargo and uh, well, really pirated a cargo, and <laughs> it's not a cargo anybody really wants because it's uh, it kind of came from you know that there's a meme where somebody opens a box and there's um, there's a bobcat or something in it, like a bobcat. <laughs> It's like would not recommend. No. <laughs> yeah, it, it's the idea is sort of spurred from that. So this this wild cat ends up being in this crate in her hold, and she's got to figure out what to do with it and how to keep her crew safe. So, so is your crew? Because I know they're both in the in the anthology. Is your crew human? Or is your yes? Crew? Yeah. Okay. In my story, the crew is human, although they're. There is a, a ship cat and a, uh, a raven, because mm -hmm. I love ravens. <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> I was just talking to a magpie outside this morning. Yeah, I have um, friends who live out of country, and one of them was visiting and had never seen a magpie before. It's like, what bird is that? Magpies, yeah. They're everywhere. <laughs> yeah, they're really pretty. I, yeah. I have to admit, I like ravens better than magpies, but this one was just really chatty, so. Well, ravens are so intelligent. It's just, yeah. you know. Yeah. They can, they're teachable. Yeah. Yeah, they can talk. I think magpies can talk, too. I, think I know so. we had, <laughs> we had a car in our neighborhood there that the alarm kept going off, and one of the ravens used to sit outside our, our house and mimic the sound of the car alarm going off. Wow. wow. We never actually knew whether it was just the raven or, or the actual car alarm. Wow. Yeah. We had, um, when we lived in um, a townhouse when I was young, we had guinea pigs. And eventually we got rid of the guinea pigs, but we kept hearing the sound. We kept hearing sound. Turned out the neighbors had a parrot. Oh. <laughs> Picked up the guinea pig's sound. Oh, <laughs> because we're looking yeah. for this guinea pig everywhere through the house. Oh my goodness! So yeah, so that's funny. All right, and then we will discuss the witch's diary, which is a full novel as opposed to the short story. Yeah, and it just came out. Yes, yes, twenty twenty. Twenty twenty, yeah, <laughs> to the virtual launches. Although you tried to have one in person didn't you was one of the yeah we ones? did um i i did i did three events i did the hecate festival yeah. which is a festival outside of the states via it was Zoom. virtual yeah yeah that one was virtual the launch party was virtual and um the 
um, I did one at our local library and it was a, um, a ticket based thing. Oh, so okay. we could manage how many people showed up and everyone was spaced out accordingly. So it was a safe event. Thankfully, you know, a month ago when things <laughs> yeah, weren't as opposed to quite now, so bad. Yeah. Yeah. But that was really nice. It was nice to be able to, you know, just be out and see, see friends and new faces. Well, we're hoping by next year, the next When Words Collide, we can sort of roll everybody into, because we usually do a launch every year at Words Collide, but obviously not this year, so. Yeah, 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 I'm looking forward to it. We're all signed up for it, and my, um, my best friend's daughter, actually, um, who's 14, has written uh, um, her first book so uh she's gonna come with us next year so that's super exciting have you been before yeah yeah we go every year i've probably been probably five times five one of the six. founding the co-founders so. <laughs> not not quite that far back <laughs> well it's been 10 i guess next year will be 11 but i don't know how they counted today i i stopped at about seven ish yeah for 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 very health reasons and stuff which is fine but yeah i i was i did the first year's programming so. oh wow and we did registration and those stupid news notes that they put out i did up until i quit and i'm still doing newsletters i just need for typing them <laughs> yeah <laughs> newsletters seem to be my thing it's a lot of work i find coming up with the titles are hardest you know, yeah, putting to in music. books too. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. The hardest part about anything I've ever written is trying to figure out what to call it for the title, and trying to write the synopsis for the back. Yeah. Well, I'm sure Margaret helped a little bit on it, didn't she? On oh, the synopsis. Yeah, really? Margaret uh, yeah. did the synopsis for the back of the Witch's Diary, which I was very thankful <laughs> for because. Man, do I struggle with those. She usually has to come up with them because when I put up on the website the coming soon, then I go, okay, I need a synopsis for this now. So, <laughs> yeah. She usually writes them up pretty quickly once I say, do it now. <laughs> so, um, yeah, she's pretty good at that. All right, so let's just talk about The Witch's Diary. We haven't really talked about, we talked around it in the titles, but we haven't actually spoken of it. So what is yeah. the diary? Yeah, the, the Witch's Diary, um, it started out as kind of like a fun side project for me. I wanted to experiment with first person. Mm -hmm. And um, one, of the, one of the ways I thought of doing that was, well, what if I'm just writing a diary, but as somebody else? Mm -hmm. And uh, it was really interesting because it, it got me writing every day. And um, even if just like for a little bit, because, you know, not, not all your days look the same. So yes. it, sometimes you don't have the spoons to write, let alone have a shower <laughs> and get ready. I'm with a four-year-old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's challenging. But um, yeah, so I mean, it, it would just... Uh, it accom like the the format of it accommodated my ability to write um, in that style. So, uh, and I was able to weave in like little events and stuff that would happen. Yes. Every day too, which I think like brought some like, reality to to a fantasy story. So no, it's a it's a fun story. I mean, it it goes through a young witch. Um, basically doing, trying to find a practicum is how I would put it. So she could get her final yeah. degree. I know you didn't call it degree, but yeah. Idea. yeah. And, and trials and tribulations thereof. Yeah. And I like how you put into it, um, why witches are hags and do curses. Yes. You know, they, they don't do it just because. I'm a witch and that's what I do. There, there's a reason, which I won't get 
too into because spoilers, although I don't know if that's really spoilery, but <laughs> um, yeah, so I found it interesting because your witch isn't hag looking and it kind of bothers her. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think it, I, it's probably partially author inserting themselves into the story because <laughs> well you're not hag looking I don't know where you get that from no, I'm not but you know what I always feel like I've been the crone you know they talk about the maiden mother and crone aspects yes. of the goddess and I've never identified with the maiden and not I mean I mean, I am a mother now but I have aspects of the mother but I, I've always been the crone. Like, maybe it's the hermit in me. I don't know. <laughs> I would consider we all have a little bits of all of them. But Yeah. Yeah, I think so. My dominant is definitely the crone. So, and I could always, I could always relate to that when I was younger, too. Because people make assumptions about you based on, on how you look, whether it's your, you know, you know, your age or hair color, you know, skin color, whatever, they make assumptions based on what they see in front of them. And um, I just kind of wanted, wanted somebody who's struggling with that, right? Because she's, she's trying to enter a profession, she knows what she's doing. She's still figuring some things out, but she's, she's trained, right? Like she, she, she's capable, she just, She's basically going through what all kids at that age are going through, I think. Yeah. Um, I've yeah. done the schooling. Now I've got to get to to get to the end. Yeah. Yeah. She needs she needs a confidence in herself. Yep. Um, and it can't come from other people. It's gotta come from from herself. Although she has a very good and patient friend. I'll just put it that way. She does. <laughs> She's his very good support system. Yeah. Yeah, and that that's another reason why I wanted to write this book um like I'm I'm ace so when I read a book um I I just skip through the romance parts because it's severe it's, it's just it's not my thing right so it, it's just filler for me that I have to get through to the interesting parts so I really wanted to write a book where friendship was front and center and you know, it's, it's, it's that kind of abiding friendship where they'll support you, they'll walk with you, they're right there for mm -hmm. you when, when you need like a shoulder to lean on or cry on or laugh with, like, yes, yeah, or um, destroy a bar with, right? Or two. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> more than one for sure. Yes. Although I want to try the little alcohol things they put in their drinks. Oh, those. the ghoul eyes. Yeah. Yes. It's fermented yeah. ghoul eyes. Maybe um maybe one one year we'll be able to have have a party and uh yeah. I can make some fermented ghoul eye drinks. <laughs> it sounds pretty good. sure I can figure out how to do that. Yeah, actually, now that you're part of the Taiki family, you'll have to come to the Friday Night Scotch thing at um, Windward's Clyde. Yes, I'm a big Scotch fan. So, so <laughs> my husband and I. So we... Uh, <laughs> Just in case I need it, I got a little bit here. <laughs> I'm actually not allowed to drink at the moment for medical reasons, and I so miss it. But oh. yeah, at Words Clyde, every Friday I, th I throw a Scotch party. And then oh, that's I started awesome. working for Taiki we just sort of incorporated it so that is so cool it's I am semi there. private because we've had a few people who know nothing about scotch and the things they would do you'd just go no because uh -oh. it's high end like these are hundred dollar bottles that i'd always bring and, <laughs> and you know we've had people like put them on their cake or put them on i'm like no no, no. oh my goodness so what's your favorite scotch um, I used to like, and they don't make it anymore, an 88 Glenrothes. It had oh. just a hint of caramel in it. And it was, and, and when we were at Words Clyde, because when you're on the committee at Words Clyde, on the Wednesday before the um, 
the convention, you have a, you have a barbecue with all the guests. So the first guest was Jack White, and he's Scottish. So him and Tony King and I were sitting there talking, and this is how the Scotch thing started at Words Collide. We're talking about our favorite Scotches, and I could not remember the name of it. <laughs> and later I emailed Tony and said, oh, it's this, it's Glen Rothis, I'll bring a bottle. And he goes, okay, I'll bring a bottle of my, of my favorite, which was a Lafrag, which is about as opposite to a Glen Rothis as you could get. That's my favorite. It's my husband's the Lef- favorite. The Lafrag 10 year. Yeah, it's my husband's fa- favorite too. We usually compromise and go with like a Bowmore. Ah, uh, yeah. It's, you know, not quite as peaty, as, but it's not smooth. Like, yeah. So I brought it and he brought his and, um, and Jack White liked the Glen Rothis. He's never, he never had it before, believe it or not. And he wow. liked it so much. He had me go to the store and buy him two bottles <laughs> to take home. <laughs> and I went, I won. I knew a Scotch, a Scotsman didn't know. Yeah, that's so cool. Yes. My but goodness. they don't make it anymore. Um, so I, I'm a slave to, um, uh, to media. So I was playing um, the Yakuza games and they, and they drink a 17 year old Valentine's. So I, 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 I had to go out and buy that. So I bought, drunk a lot of that. And oh. then in the movie Constantine with Keanu Reeves, he drinks an Arbeg. So we've been drinking a lot of that because we saw that again, rewatched that again recently. Wow. And yeah. yeah, and then in the um, Richard Morgan, what's the name of the book? Anyways, he's on Mar- It's a Mar- He's on Mars, and the main character drinks Lafrag. So we've been drink. So I've been a slave to media <laughs> lately. When when I could, I've been about dry for like three months now. It sucks, but oh. um, but yeah, lately it's hey, what are they drinking? Let's have that. Even though ninety percent of them we've had before, but. Yeah, we're we're. I'm a, been a slave to media lately. Yeah, I think everybody has. <laughs> well, yeah, I know, but <laughs> that's true. But usually, they don't go out and buy the drink of. The <laughs> well, maybe they do. Yeah, but it doesn't take much with me. It's just a suggestion. I was reading my my friend's daughter's manuscript, and she's talking about cookies. <laughs> my comment in the in the margins is, ah, oh, now I want cookies. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's one thing about when the kids grow up and go home, you bake less cookies. Yeah. Cause when it's just two of you. Yeah. Well, they're good, but. Somebody's got to eat them. Exactly. It's gotta be you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We, we had some old bananas the other day. So we made banana muffins and oh, yeah. I think. My daughter's had one and I've had like four. <laughs> and that would be it here too. Like I've done banana bread and stuff. And my husband will have one or two slices and <laughs> mine be that way. So, yeah. And now usually at Christmas, we have my daughter and her partner over and we bake, we Christ- Christmas fry the house and then we bake gingerbread cookies, Ooh. huge batches. But now they've, curtailed that for three weeks so I don't know what we're gonna do yeah 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 our families for Christmas um we're gonna isolate for two weeks before Mm -hmm. and um my my partner's mom is gonna do the same so we're gonna get together but with my family they can't like their lifestyle just doesn't they can't isolate they've got to they've got to go to work and stuff so we can't we're well, going to have a backyard um, wiener roast, I think, that's distanced, weather permitting, but that's all we can do. Yeah, my husband's in education, so, you know, oh, of yeah. anybody, he's going to get it. He hasn't yet, even though there's been several cases, but yeah. Oh, good. We expect of everyone, they're going to get, he's the one who, who's the most susceptible. Yeah. But I'm hoping by Christmas Day, because they say this is for three weeks. Although it'll be over, this is going out after Christmas, so this will be fun. (laughs) Yeah. Should we make some predictions? Should I get out my tarot cards? (laughs) Sure, I can get out. I have tarot cards, too. Do you? Yes. Awesome. I haven't used them in years, but... (laughs) Yeah, my my partner uh, 
the other day said, what do you have, like, three tarot card decks? I'm like, ha ha. <laughs> I only have two. Oh, yeah, I have way more than that. But it's three the that artwork. Knows of. I know, it's beautiful. They're, they just keep coming out with such pretty ones. Like, oh, my pretties, I'm going to collect you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have um, one that's pretty basic. And then I do have one with some really nice artwork on it. But I, I never actually mastered reading or anything. It's more like these are pretty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I should maybe, I don't know. Maybe I should frame some of them. Well, what you can do is you can get a big frame and put them all in it. So yeah. A deck. Yeah. Yeah. Because some of them I don't use. They're just pretty. Yeah. So I might as well be able to see them. That's a good thought. Monday. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're going to switch gears and talk about your other writing. We are in a tangent. I know that we're going everywhere and that's fun. That's the way life is. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to text my partner to come down. Okay. Um, do I have other titles of yours here? Um, we have uh, Chaos Bound and Curse Bound are ones that I wrote with my partner. That's right. Make me spell chaos. <laughs> All right. You know what word I can never ever spell is restaurant. Is it the every A -U time? R e s t a u r a n t. I think. Yeah, I might be wrong. <laughs> I I'd offer a, a guess, but I would definitely be wrong. I can type it in. All right, I have it up here on the Amazon. Let's see if I can pull up the cover. No, it's not going to let me do that. Uh, I wonder if I can share the screen. Share screen. I'm not going to share your book, sorry. I think I might. Hold on. I know you. I see you lots. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Whoop. Oh, they're going to be backwards, aren't they? Well, that's weird. <laughs> uh, the backwards on your screen, are they backwards on your screen? Yeah. Then they're going to be forwards. Fine. Oh, perfect. There you go. That's the magic. It's, for example, my, the backgrounds on mine that are um, the witch's diary and swashbuckling are backwards on my screen. Ooh. But they're not on yours. So I had mentioned to Rebecca, I was going to ask, do you guys argue a lot when you talk like no the character should do this no I want them to do this I don't think we are argue well we've had, we've had some notable disagreements yes. I would say about sure. subplots subplots <laughs> <laughs> for sure that would be largely irrelevant <laughs> yeah so when we first started but I don't think we argue at much these days we kind of honed out the rough edges and we just yeah that's good. So it's easy working with each other then. Yeah, it's really good because um, like everybody gets stuck sometimes, I think. Mm -hmm. So whenever I'm stuck, either thinking about what happens next or if I'm stuck writing a scene, like I just don't know what viewpoint to put the scene from or like where to go with the scene. Um, it's really, really helpful to have somebody just to bounce ideas off of. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm the kind of person who has a lot of ideas. <laughs> of ideas. Some of them are even good ideas. <laughs> so I mean, it really helps to have that, that person to, uh, to say, hey, I have this idea and kind of just gauge from the look on the face reaction. It's kind of a, yeah, that can work or is it a... <laughs> maybe, maybe not. <laughs> I like, I'm unable to, to hide my feelings. They're just <laughs> always written on my face. <laughs> yeah. So how do you do the couple's writing process? Because I know some people, one will write one chapter and one will write the other, or they will just hash it up together. Or how, So how is your couple's writing process? Well, for those, for those 
novels, what we do is we get together at the beginning um, and do like a really extensive like scene by scene outline just so we can kind of lay out everything in detail. And then because Adrian has um, a day job, <laughs> um, when I'm not caring for Ellie, I will go and spend my day um, writing. I'm so sleeping. I'll write the scene out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll write, I'll write the scene or the chapter or whatever, and then I'll pass it over to Adrian who edits it and then I get it back and do anything that I need to do and then I'll just move on to the next scene. Okay. So that's that's what we did for those books and then any other like books that we're writing on like The Witch's Diary, any short stories or Adrian's work, working on two novels right now um, that are just about done. Um, one, the, one is still very well, it was the first draft. <laughs> first draft is practically not done at all, but whatever. <laughs> um, like, we, we will hand stuff back and forth to each other, no matter what we're, we're writing. So really, like, anything I've written, Adrian's been instrumental in it, and vice versa. And we, we have each other's beta readers. Yeah, absolutely. And editors, and... <laughs> shoulder to cry on yeah yeah and we were like we're so lucky like we when we moved out to where we live um we found another uh couple who were also interested in writing so we're like our little little own critique group we we read each other well we all write science fiction and fantasy, which we love to read. So it's just like having a new source of stories at, at all times. So it's really, really awesome. So shout out to Rob and Ellen. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. Yeah. So what advice would you have for um, couples? Uh, uh, not necessarily, not even necessarily partners so much as people um, who co-write. I would say like one of the most important things with co-writing is to be like specific in your requests and, and really that's for critiquing anything like even in a writing group like if you if you're gonna hand something off to somebody else be specific in what you're looking for like are you are you concerned about your pacing so the reader knows to pay attention to that when they're reading it or are you concerned about character development and my big thing is i i overwrite like i i'll write 200,000 words and cut it and it needs to be <laughs> it needs to be cut down to 100,000 you know what i mean yeah. <laughs> so that like that's one of my specific concerns that i need to get my my first readers and beta readers to to look at is does this character need to be in the story does the scene need to be in the story like have i gone off on a tangent that doesn't yeah. need to be in there i think identifying your strengths um kind of try trying to work each other off to kind of identify what you what you like to do and what your your writing is strong at or weak at yeah um so you can I think we're just lucky that we also happen to have writing strengths that are very complementary. <laughs> yeah. um, as well as living together, which really helps because you, as a writing partner, you kind of want to be available at every hour of the day because you just never know when an idea is going to hit or a, um, a frustration is going to, going to hit. So, um, yeah. 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 Cause it, one of my, one of my um, struggles is action scenes. Like I, I'm just not good at them. So whenever I come to an action scene, I'm almost always going to Adrian for for help writing that or or even just planning it out. Yeah. And I'm I'm I tend to be better at sort of the drudgery like um, <laughs> editing because <laughs> by the by the time you're done a, done a piece, you've you've read it over and edited it like a million times. But I actually enjoy that process. So. You're certainly a lot better than me at grammar or spelling. We have a, uh, I'm kind of easy in those areas. It's really lucky we have computers. Um, yeah. <laughs> but also in terms of, well, as I call it, adding life to a story. 
I got a lot of my writing tends, I tend to underwrite, I tend to be minimalist. Oh, yeah. Rebecca just adds that kind of, I call it adding life to stories, that little bits of description, little bits of character, little bits of, of you know, common action that, that turn a kind of bland narrative into engaging, uh, which I'm still trying to learn how to do. And close. I can't write close to save my life. <laughs> So when you're editing each other's work, do you find that's helpful? Because one will catch something. Because when you write your own story, you're going to miss things because oh. you've done it. Yeah. One, one of the funniest things that, that an editor ever found for us was in our first book, I think it was Chaos Bound. Um, we hired an editor to go through it. And we, twice in that book, instead of voila, we had, we had written Viola. <laughs> Viola. Well, yeah, could add to the story depending on what you're doing. It could, but yeah, and we, I like, we had probably read that story fifty times and missed that. Like both of us, we had friends and family read it. <laughs> like nobody caught that, nobody but caught this that. wonderful editor did. Yeah. So yeah, you're always going to miss stuff, but yeah, I think regardless, somebody else will catch it. Yeah. What I find the, the alpha reader, the beta reader type editing so good for is the, uh, you know, I've been before, if I'm now to repeat this often, is the, you know, I see where you're going for, but the words aren't on the page. The words are still in your head. Like half the words for this scene are still in your head. You need to actually get them on the page. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, a good editor will help with that, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're invaluable. Right, Con? The orange one made a cameo earlier. <laughs> yeah. 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 They're, they're, not, they're not normally allowed in my office, just occasionally, but we figured for today. Mine's sleeping. She's pure black, so she doesn't have light on her, but she's sleeping. Okay, um, how long have we been recording? Oh, we've been doing good. We've put in about 40 minutes already. Wow. So is there anything you want to add to plug? Where can people find you? I'm on our website at bravevitae.com. Um, I'm on Twitter and Adrian's on Twitter. Uh, we have a Facebook page under Bravite as well. And of course, I mean, the books are available everywhere and uh, on the Taiki web yes. page as well. So, yeah. Well, send me send me the Twitter and Facebook links and I'll put it in the notes to this video. Okay. Sounds good. And I was just going to share this. This is from a notebook from like <laughs> 1986. This is like... One of my kid drawings. Oh, I don't know if that's getting. Yeah, you can see it with the, the green or bluish. Hair. Yeah, yeah, that's my. That's a witch. So I've been like witch obsessed. <laughs> well, you're also obsessed with the goddess Hecate. Like you've attended yes. some of the festivals and the. Yeah. So yeah, it brings then... you to to being interested in. Um, you know the earth earth goddess and the tarot and the what um, I, it's just something I've it's always not something you normally grow up with so. <laughs> yeah I guess not I <laughs> like, maybe your daughter literally yeah my daughter for sure um thank you <laughs> um I think um like I I don't know. I've just always connected with witches from obviously as a child. Thank like you. I, <laughs> I used to, I used to pretend that I was, I was a witch <laughs> as a child. And for Halloween, all I ever wanted to be was, was a witch. So I don't, I don't know how to explain it. It's just, it's a connection. It's just a connection to nature, I think for me and the cycles of life so yeah yeah because she features heavily in um the witch's diary yeah she 
she does Hecate in specific. I didn't really know much about her. I mean, my, my education is in classical studies and sociology. Um, but it was, she's not mentioned a lot in, in any one piece of, of classical literature. Um, she's kind of piecemeal mentioned here and there mm -hmm. from, from various mythology um, retellings. But um, the, more, the more I learned about her for the witch's diary, the more interested I became in her. And I've never, never really connected with any kind of god or goddess mm -hmm. or anything like that, which a lot of people in, in, <laughs> in the uh, uh, Wiccan and pagan communities do connect with, with deities. Um, but yeah, so it was always a bit of an outlier because, you know, it, it just hadn't happened for me yet. And then when the more I learned about Hecate, though, the more I realized, oh my goodness, like she's, she's been, I think, kind of walking around beside me um, since I was a, a kid because I can see pieces of her in, in, and stuff from from way back so yeah that was really interesting and I mean who knew that writing a book could yeah. could give you that kind of connection yeah well that's good so the book is the witch's diary here my screen keeps wanting to cut my fingers off <laughs> <laughs> um, and I want to thank you and your husband for doing an interview. Oh, thank you. And we will talk to you soon. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.